Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. Now, one of the most consistent, if not common questions I've had on this channel over the years is, what do I do with my full electric vehicle that might be different to a petrol engine car if I'm not using it for any length of time? So for example, if I go on holiday for two weeks, do I have to do anything specific to one of these? Now, given the current state of affairs at the moment in the world, this question has peaked in popularity somewhat. So I thought I'd finally answer the question, what do you have to do to a full electric vehicle if it's just sat standing, not being used for, let's say, a couple of weeks or more. Now, as you can tell from this, this is a petrol car. And as you can see from what this idiot's pointing at, this is a 12 volt battery in a petrol car. Most people are aware of what this does and the fact that ironically and quite amusingly to electric car owners, if this battery is faulty or just not charged, that car is useless. The petrol engine car will not work if its battery is flat. Now this is a full electric car and under here is a 12 volt battery just like you get in a petrol engine car. And this is just as crucial to an electric car as it is to a petrol car. If that's flat, faulty, or unplugged, this car will not work. Even if the main high voltage traction battery is full, it doesn't matter. That thing takes care of all the door entry systems, the infotainment unit, the headlights, the wipers, and without it, you're not going anywhere. Now a petrol car charges up its 12 volt battery by using one of these, an alternator. And that is only going to charge the battery up when the engine is running. So if you don't run a petrol engine car for several weeks, there's a good chance you're gonna come back and find that 12 volt battery is flat because if the engine doesn't run, the battery doesn't get charged up. Electric vehicles like this one do not have alternators. That is not how an electric car operates. They rely on the main traction battery, the big one that everybody is always concerned about, that is what charges up the 12 volt battery. Now let's imagine that this is the small 12 volt ancillary battery and this is the main high voltage big battery. Clearly not to scale, but you get my point. Now in pretty much every electric vehicle on sale, this, the big battery, will charge up the 12 volt battery when you're driving that car. So if you get in and turn the ignition on, I guess whether you're driving it or not, this will start to top up the 12 volt battery. Now some cars, will top up that 12 volt battery, whether you're driving it or not. For example, my previous EVs to this one, the Nissan Leafs, that would top up the 12 volt battery, even if it was just sat on the drive, not doing anything. If this got too low, this would top up that. So you didn't really have to worry about the 12 volt battery at all. In fact, this car, the Tesla Model 3, does the same thing. It tops up the 12 volt battery, whether I am in the car or not. So logically you think, well, brilliant, I don't have to worry about it, but it's not quite as straightforward as that. Some EVs out there, and this is where I need your help in a second, will only charge the 12 volt battery up if the ignition is on, if you turn that car on. So if it's sat in the driveway, it won't do anything. It will only work, it will only do anything with the small battery if you turn the car on. So as a broad sweeping statement, the only thing I can say to everyone is to look after your 12 volt battery, turn your electric vehicle on at least for 15 to 20 minutes a week to make sure that 12 volt stays charged up. Now I'm gonna to have to ask everyone out there, all the male of the species, to do something which goes against my very nature as a man. <clears throat> Excuse me, I nearly threw up saying it, but you're gonna to have to check your manual. You're gonna to have to get the manual out of the car and read it. That's the only way you can be certain you know how your specific EV is charged, how it looks after that 12 volt battery. Now to help each other out, to make sure other blokes don't have to read their manual, if you have an electric vehicle, whether it's an iPace, an i3, an Ionic, uh, a Leaf, a Tesla, anything, read the manual, tell us what it says about the 12 volt and what you have to do to look after it, and then put it in the comments below. Just say on page 56, it says this about the Jaguar iPace, so other people don't have to suffer through reading that book. So. Onto the main high voltage traction battery, the reason that brought you to this video. What state of charge should you keep this at if you're not gonna be using the car for any length of time? Now, both manufacturers and battery experts all say the same, thankfully, because sometimes it does differ, um, but I'll call it a, a safe zone. There is basically a safe zone of between 20 
an 80% charge to keep your battery at optimum health. That doesn't mean you can't go out of that range, just that it's not recommended you go out of that range for very long. So for example, if I was going on a long journey now, I would happily charge to 100% because I know that I will not be out of that safe zone as it were for very long because I'll be driving the car. And on the flip side, if I had 25% left on the charge and I needed 10%, to get to my destination, it wouldn't bother me by going out of that safe zone as it were, because I know I'll be charging when I get to my destination. So between 20 and 80% for any battery really, not just car batteries, that's the, uh, the safe zone as I'll call it. Now I'm not going to suggest that you keep it between 20 and 80%. What I'm going to recommend is that you keep it between 60 and 80%. Now this is because of something called vampire drain. Oh, car is still on even though it's not on. You know, it has an alarm, for example. So all cars will lose charge over time. Some are worse than others. For example, this car is the worst I have ever heard of by a country mile. In fact, I have the manual here and I'm going to read what it actually tells me about this vampire drain. And it also highlights why I think you should keep it between 60 and 80% charge. Even when the Model 3 is not being driven, its battery discharges very slowly to power the onboard electronics. The battery can discharge at a rate of approximately 1% per day, though the discharge rate may vary depending on various factors, such as cold weather, vehicle configuration, and selected settings. Situations can arise in which you must leave the Model 3 unplugged for an extended period of time, for example, at an airport traveling, in these situations, keep the 1% in mind to ensure that you leave the battery with a sufficient charge level. For example, over a two week period, 14 days, the battery may discharge by approximately 14%. Tesla Model 3 is the worst out of the lot. My Nissan Leaf as an example would probably only drop maybe four or 5% in a two week period, maybe not that, and it's got a much smaller battery. Let's imagine I do go away for two weeks and I leave it within the safe zone at 30% charge. If I went away for 14 days in this, it would drop at least 14, 15%. Therefore, by the time I came back, the car wouldn't be at 30%, it would be at around 15%. This is why I would go for 60 to 80%. It gives you a much bigger vampire drain buffer. So if you do go away for a long time, the longer the better. And if a two week holiday turns into a three week holiday, for whatever reason, you've still got that extra buffer to use up under the uh, vampire drain. So if I had 80% charge and I went away for a month, 30 days, I would probably want up to 40% just in case. So I would still be within that safe zone, started at 80, got at least 40 by the time I get back a month later, everything's fine. So this is why I would go for that period. It allows for a buffer. You don't need such a ridiculously large buffer in other cars. For example, the Nissan Leaf, as I said before, would probably in a month only lose, I don't know, something like eight to 10%, maybe. It, it, I've never really tried it, to be honest, but you still need to build that into it. So whatever charge you leave it at, is kind of dictated by how long you think that car will be sat. Given the current situation, we don't know when it's going to end. So stick it at 70, 80%, and that way it's got plenty of vampire drain buffer to go at until you get out of that to, you know, safe zone of 20 to 80% and you have to plug it back in again. It doesn't really affect it as much as people think. If you leave a battery at 100% for a couple of weeks on holiday and you think, oh no, I forgot, it's not gonna kill the battery. It might slightly increase battery degradation, but it will not kill the battery. It is very much like if you read the manual of a petrol engine car, it will say, do not use full throttle or drive aggressively until the engine is up to full temperature. But people still do, don't they? They know that if they drive aggressively uh, and the engine's not fully up to temperature yet, it might degrade the engine. It might, you know, it might reduce the lifespan of that engine, but it doesn't kill it, does it? It just slightly reduces it. Everybody knows that they should eat fruit and vegetables and eat healthily, and that's fine. And you are allowed, even under a healthy diet, to have the occasional takeaway that's bad for you, aren't you? As long as it's not very often or for not a long time. So don't get paranoid, don't get worried if you leave the you know, car at 100% or it drops below 20%, it's not gonna kill the thing. It's just, if you can, like with healthy eating, stay within that safe zone of between 20 and 80%. And that's for any battery, your laptop, your iPad, your phone.
Right, to summarise, I would recommend, if it's sat for any length of time, of leaving it between 60 and 80%, just to give you that extra buffer, just in case the vampire drain reduces it and reduces it to a point where it will get out of that safe zone of 20 to 80%. Right, that's it, pretty much. Ooh, a bit of dusty here, I'm going to have to clean the car again, aren't I? Um, so yeah, hopefully that was useful to someone. And please, please do subscribe to the channel. The one thing that this lockdown has highlighted for a lot of EV channels like my own is that you can't go and do the videos you want to do. You know, the test drives, everything's under lockdown, we can't get hold of it. And quite frankly, the content's quality isn't as good as most people want. I've had some people unsubscribe because I'm no longer test driving cars. I don't know what cave they're living, but ultimately that's not by choice. So subscriptions and uh, revenue have substantially gone down since this lockdown started. It's not just normal work, even YouTube's been affected. That and the weather, of course, that affects how many people are watching the internet, it seems. Uh, so if you can, please do subscribe. It really does help small channels such as my own. Um, yeah, that's it, pretty much. Uh, thank you for watching, stay safe as usual, and I'll see you soon.